The Karakoram Mountains are a symbol of Central Asia. They represent the strength and beauty of a culture that has endured decades of war and suffering. Today, these mountains overlook poverty, vulnerability, and an uncertain future. However, one individual's actions have a power with the ability to change all of this. Greg Mortensen is bringing education to Central Asia. During the 1970s, Central Asia was not so different from the West. Women, in particular, had more freedoms than they do today and were an important part of the medical and educational infrastructure in many countries. However, the Soviet invasion of Afghanistan in 1979 changed all this. As the nation struggled to defend itself, a group of radical Muslims rose to prominence in the region, the Taliban. The Taliban fought alongside more moderate Muslims, but when the conflict was over, new fighting broke out between the former allies. The Taliban quickly infiltrated Afghanistan's weakened central government and imposed strict religious laws on the people. The Taliban referred to these restrictions as Sharia law, laws deriving from the Quran, although many Afghans feel that they are not accurate. Some of these laws include, women and girls are not permitted to work outside the home, women and girls will wear the chadri, no male physician may touch the body of a woman under the pretext of a medical examination, and all those who break the laws of Sharia will be punished in the public square. If a woman left home without the supervision of a male relative or wearing a burqa, she was in danger of being beaten to death by the Taliban. To preserve the health of the female population, former women doctors have run medical operations secretly in their homes. However, many are too afraid to pursue medical attention in this way, for if they are caught by the Taliban, they will be killed. Education has also been affected by the Taliban's oppressive rule. Girls are forbidden from receiving an education, and many boys do not attend school for fear of the Taliban. In 2003, the literacy level in Afghanistan was labeled as the lowest in the world, and Pakistan stood at 48%. Literacy in the United States is 97%. The U.S. became involved in the War on Terror as a result of the 9-11 attack on the World Trade Center. However, by establishing their authority with bombs and forceful interrogations, our military has been struggling to keep the Taliban at bay. Greg Mortensen, however, has the right idea. After a failed attempt to summit K2, the world's second highest and most dangerous mountain, Mortensen was taken in by a small village in the Karakoram to recuperate. Greg remembers Corfe as being far from the prelapsarian paradise of Western fantasy. In every home, at least one person suffered from goiters or cataracts, and one out of three Corfe children died before reaching their first birthday. When Greg asked to see Corfe school, he was led to a patch of dirt where 78 boys and four lucky girls gathered, exposed to the elements to practice their lessons in the mud. There was no teacher, as the government would not supply a dollar a day to hire one. Greg resolved to build these students a school. Since then, Greg has co-founded the Central Asia Institute and, as of 2008, built 78 schools to educate children, especially girls. We have about 540 teachers, but four of them are former Taliban. And all of them got out of the Taliban because their mothers told them what you're doing is not um, a good thing, and not in the name of Islam. So they're our greatest advocates now for girls' education, kind of like an ex-smoker who, who quit uh, and saw the light, and, so to speak. See yeah. the light, and in the Quran, it's very implicitly spelled out also that if a man or a young man goes on jihad, he has to get permission first from his mother. And when a woman has an education, she's much less likely to condone her son to get into violence or into terrorism. Greg Mortensen's actions in fighting terrorism are evidence that compassion is the most effective way to establish a legacy against the Taliban and a brighter future for people in Central Asia, especially women. Since the war on terror began in 2001, the United States has used increasingly brutal tactics in order to locate and capture Taliban leaders. People who are often only suspected Taliban are imprisoned and taken to the U.S. naval base in Guantanamo Bay without access to their lawyers or families. There is also evidence that the Convention Against Torture of Prisoners of War has been violated. Those who are suspected to be or know anything about terrorists are often interrogated in brutal and inhumane ways. Matthew Alexander, U.S. interrogator and author of How to Break a Terrorist, however, holds beliefs regarding torture contrary to those of the majority of his profession. 
mass torture is not necessary to get the job done, not even useful? Uh, no, actually it's extremely uh, ineffective and it's counterproductive to what we're trying to accomplish in both the uh, short term and the long term. In the short term, when you torture somebody, it hardens their resolve. Uh, the information that you get is unreliable. And, and even if you do get reliable information, you're able to stop a terrorist attack. Al-Qaeda is then going to use uh, the fact that we torture people to recruit new members. And then we're going to have to deal with a whole new wave of uh, terrorists. Alexander's philosophy has shown results. In 2006, compassionate interrogation methods led to the capture of Abu Musab Zarqawi, leader of al-Qaeda in Iraq. The capture of Saddam Hussein, the oppressive former ruler of Iraq, was brought about similarly. Alexander's beliefs are shared with Greg Mortensen and the Central Asia Institute. Their actions, however, involve education. By becoming close to and supporting a group of people, the Central Asia Institute leaves behind a legacy demonstrating that not all Americans are as bad as they are portrayed by the Taliban, discouraging youth from being recruited. However, Greg's schools are not the only ones teaching in regards to terrorism. Other establishments, such as madrasas, teach religion as well as other things, but are often controlled by the Taliban. 17-year-old Nazar Mohammed and his cousin attended a madrasa in Shaman controlled by the Taliban and were recruited to join the Al-Qaeda forces. They were killed in combat. Their parents believed that they, had they been properly educated, would still be alive. Other madrasas, such as the Shaldara Madrasa in Keta, had their students serve as the communication system for the Taliban and even housed known Al-Qaeda officials at their school. We are proud that the Taliban are made and helped here and we do everything we can to facilitate them. Because it is necessary for these children to go to school to help their families and establish a future for themselves, recruiting becomes easy for the Taliban. Greg's schools provide an alternative so that children can still receive an education but not be recruited. In fact, many of Greg's students have continued their education and made their dreams come true. Jahan, one of the first educated women in Corfe, had always dreamt of becoming a doctor. However, as she was from one of the poorest regions in Pakistan, this was impossible, until Greg Mortensen intervened. She is now studying medicine at a prestigious school in Skardu. Five years ago, Fatima Badul lost her home and older sister in a bombing on their village, Bromo. The Central Asia Institute was able to supply refugees of this attack with water, food, and shelter. They later helped the people of Bromo rebuild their village elsewhere. Because of these actions, the Taliban's recruiting efforts in Bromo have been made virtually impossible. Although the long-term benefits of defeating terrorism with education are countless, in the short term, it would be a huge risk. Violence is the best way to keep the Taliban at bay, and if such tactics were not employed, building schools would be impossible. In fact, to achieve anything in Central Asia, it may take a combination of violence and peace. I wouldn't say it's one thing. I would say it's two things that complement each other. Uh, one, we are aggressively um, going after terrorists globally and trying to ensure that uh, they can't actively plot against the U.S. and our allies. And second, we're doing our best to uh, ensure that there's not a new generation of terrorists by countering the influences that lead to radicalization. To educate a population will also take time that is not available to us. It is possible that just as many lives would be taken in this endeavor as in combat. However, with violence, we can only eliminate the Taliban for a set period of time. If lives must be lost either way, it is better that the oppression will die forever. In the end, this approach will be much more effective in establishing a legacy against terrorism than bombings and violent attacks by the American government. American strategy has largely consisted of attempts to remove the infrastructure of Taliban leaders controlling the people. However, killing individuals will not eliminate terrorism. As long as poverty and suffering exist in Central Asia, the Taliban will live on. To truly defeat the ideologies of terrorism, it is not the leaders, but the hearts and minds of the people that must change. As we speak, the war against terrorism continues. However, with a new administration taking power in the U.S., America has the opportunity to correct its mistakes. If President Barack Obama follows through with his plans to close Guantanamo Bay and invests in peace rather than war, America's actions may result in a positive legacy against terrorism. Greg Mortensen has also come one step closer to achieving his goal of peace in Central Asia. He has been nominated for the 2009 Nobel Peace Prize. Furthermore, his actions have begun to influence the U.S. Got military. Email from General Petraeus, who's our CENTCOM commander. He said he had read three cups of tea, and he sent me three bullet points. This is what he learned from the book. Number one, build relationships. Number two, have respect. Number three, that we need to listen to people. We need to listen. 
General David Petraeus has made three cups of tea required reading for all his military leaders entering Afghanistan. If our military continues to heed Greg Mortensen's advice, we may discover that terrorism is best defeated by books, not bombs. If you help us in this, I think we don't need guns, we don't need tanks, we don't need aircrafts, we need education. That's what I feel Greg is doing for us.